This is the 75th episode of the Double Cross Anime Podcast. I'm Wooper. And I am Mario. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, we have Chihayafuru, B-Stars, um, Hoshi Aino Sora, and Mugen no Junin, Blade of the Immortal, on mm-hmm. tap today. Uh, it's episode 6 of all those except for Mugen no Junin, which is episode 7. And then we have three more episodes, four to six, of Mario's favorite tennis anime ever, <laughs> um, Ace Wo Nerai, or Aim for well, the Ace. Yep. Still, That's the show that I I think kicks off many of the uh, of the tropes of the uh, shoujo manga, or even, you know, like the, uh, the sport manga to come. No, I, so, I mean... So, yeah, de- definitely... Uh, classics uh, definitely my favorite yeah oh for sure you have to pay respect <laughs> to uh <laughs> Hiromi for you know setting the blueprints that's for right. anime characters going forward which she kind of did right, unfortunately right. <laughs> all right but we'll see whether your opinion of that of that series has uh, improved at all once we get to the end of this podcast to start which series yep. should we um start gabbing about all right. Um, either Chihara Furu or Bista. Uh, okay. Let's just do... I mean, I have Chihara Furu at the top of my notes here. All right. So Let's go with Chihara Furu then. Okay. Yep. Uh, this show is godlike as usual. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. It's, well, it's really the enjoyed the match. We still haven't, haven't got into like, the end of this final match, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't want it to end. Can we just go full uh, Chimera Ant or Chimera Ant and, like, slow this match down and drag it out over the course of 60 episodes? I'd be down. Nah. Nah, I don't want to do that. Nah. No. I'm, I'm actually... I'm actually looking forward for the uh, for the next tournament, but is the which is the... Uh, uh, qualification of queen and the king it's a um, much interesting more much more interesting to me than this one no and this one's the best because it's chihaya and taichi in the finals this is the right. this is the peak all right but uh, you don't like excuse me you don't like tai- tai Chi yourself i mean i i think he's he, an interesting character i'm i'm fine with him i just sometimes i feel like uh the show crams him down our throats yeah, the the self PT things, right? The what thing? The the PT like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He's never lucky. The bad luck. Yeah, the bad luck. <laughs> never lucky. <laughs> Baby rage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I like all the characters though. They're all cool, Tai Chi included. Yeah. And I think it's great that he's yeah, in the that- finals. That's true. And he's even um, out to an early lead. Like, he seems to have the upper hand in this match until the end when Chihai is yeah. like, it's just Tai Chi. It's just Tai Chi. It's just Tai Chi. <laughs> well, um, yeah, to her credit, this is like the first time that uh, Chihai is looking at uh, Tai Chi straight to the face. That's what, that what everyone, every other character frame, you know? Uh, so, so that just means that uh, she look at him he in a different way now it, it, i think it's it's more like he she look at him for who he is now i mean i i get what the show was going for with all that but ironically mm-hmm. even though people think that she's looking him, at him differently uh she is kind of reinforcing her mentality that he is just the same old tai chi and he can be beaten and all she has to do is treat him as she regularly does in order to win that's what yeah. I, that whole thing at the end of the episode was about. So while everyone else, like perhaps even Tai Chi included, thinks that she's seeing him for the first time, uh, she's mm-hmm. actually trying not to do that. Right, right. I can see your point. So <laughs> I mean, and I I think that the end of the episode kind of signals a comeback because of, he was out uh, to of Chihara. Yeah, yep, I, yep. yeah. I think Ch- Chihara is going to win at this point. Uh, because mm. Tai Chi, you know, he, he got out to that early lead and now she's like psyching herself up and kind of downplaying this amazing run that he's on. 
and she's yep. just going to come back and he's going to be like, oh no, she's my one weakness, and lose. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That, well, let's see. Yeah. How <laughs> did I mean, I know you've read how, the manga, how, how, so you can't you can't really comment on that. Yeah, let's see how how it sort of come down to. Yeah, and I think it'll probably be the match will be over within the next episode, which is coming out in just right. a couple days. Yep. All right. To be fair, though, this is my least favorite uh, episode for a while. Oh. Just be just because this is just I think just because this is the final, so it's have more focus on Tai Chi. Chihara than a, any other characters, and I, I usually enjoy like the uh, the small moments of you know like uh correct other characters moment, where where they you know where they where we get to see them, uh their, their struggles and how how they feel and, yeah and this I I just think that this episode lacks lacks some of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly all the focus is on one match, so it can't go around the room and check in on, like, multiple pairs of characters, and there's less time given to some some side or secondary characters as well, you mm -hmm. know, because it's all about mm -hmm. what's going on in the finals and all that. But yep. there there are some, I think there are some good moments, like, um, near yeah. the beginning when when Arata agrees to stay and watch Shihai's match, and, mm -hmm. uh, and Morao who lost in the semifinals yep. to Tai Chi, he also stays because he's yep. he says, if I don't understand why I lost to Tai Chi, there's no way I'll be satisfied. That's right. Uh, so he, you know, I thought, even though I thought that his match against Tai Chi was kind of shafted, um, mm. I thought that was a, a nice little inclusion to kind of keep him in view. You know, all the people that have yep. lost, he kind of represents all the people that have been stepped on along the way to the to the finals here. Yeah, uh, I actually enjoy the uh, the the uh, the moments of the models. So there is the models of um, of another girl in um uh, within the same uh, uh, the same team. I don't remember her name. Wait, who? Uh, the the model of um the the one who the one who um who rent uh Chihara the uh, the kimono. Oh yeah, uh, Kana's mom. Yeah, Kana. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, she have her moment there as well. Oh yeah, and she helps Taiji like... put on his uh, his hakama. Yep, yep, yep. And even to um, uh, to Tihara's moms, where she had to work over times. That was in the last episode. Uh, uh, that was the last episode, is it? Yeah, like, we saw I, I, we saw I, I, Chihaya's mom and her sister. Uh, and the modeling gig that was in episode five, right? All right. Um, so which episode I see received the text message from from Tihara? Uh, is it was last, was that in this is one? It this one or is it? Uh, so she received like the message uh, tell her to come. Oh, okay. Does she actually go? I, I can't remember. Yeah, Did she actually I, I, show no, up no, no. at so the I, um, at the venue. Chihaya's mom. Uh. Not yet. <laughs> okay, but she, yeah, I kind of do remember her getting a message saying, you know, I'm I'm in the finals. Thank you yeah. for for the hakama. Uh, come and come and see me all if right, you so, can. All right. So that was in episode five. No, I guess that was in episode six. The we saw her mom in episode five when she goes and visits Chihaya's sister, you know, her other daughter. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah that's she's, right. That's she's right. at yep. the the photo shoot and stuff. Yep. And and this time she was like at the end of her workshop. Okay. And she saw like the, the message from Chihara. Alright. So yeah, that there was like some nice moment there, but yeah, I I I still want more. Um I yeah, I mean we've been we've been getting it. Yep. We saw her in episode yep. five, we're gonna if we if she gets this message in episode six, then she'll probably arrive at the venue. Maybe maybe she'll be late, I don't know. Maybe she'll arrive just in time to watch Chihaya, you know, take the winning card or something. Um in episode huh. seven. Yep. We'll, well we'll probably see her again if if we ha if we're hanging on that uh that text message. Yep. Yep. 
Um, All right. Oh yeah, and Miyauchi Sensei, the the club's advisor, in the middle of the match, yeah. she like goes, psst, psst, put on your tatsuki. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're and they both like blame each other, you know. Yeah. They're both like, why did you forget? I don't know. Yeah. Why didn't you remind me? <laughs> that that sort of bickering that makes all the all the twelve year old girls' hearts flutter. <laughs> well, not necessary. <laughs> Maybe some some old guys who has is flutter as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the guy, all know. the all the Tai Chi fans who who saw that scene and were like, "Oh my God, they're perfect together." They're really just twelve year old girls like in disguise. You know, just mentally, <laughs> and they just want Jeez. they they just want Tai Chi to be their boyfriends. Yeah. Who, who can blame well, them? You know. Yeah, the, the well, guys are stuck. I, I I just don't really get, uh, follow the all the all the romance between you know Chihara, uh, Tai Chi or or anyone. In, oh, I, I mean, shows. I absolutely understand the appeal because the first time that I watched this series, I was like, Team Tai Chi forever. <laughs> uh, and I just, you know, because Chihaya is like his, the, the girl that he's had a crush on for ages. Well, I don't know, mm -hmm. like five years or however long. And, yep. um, and you know, she, she got, she's obviously very good looking. Tons of characters in universe comment on that. She's got a sister yep. who's a model, so... Like she probably has pretty good genes, I guess. And Tai Chi on the other side of the spectrum, he's also the best looking guy, you know, and he has he has the best grades in their class and all the girls all the girls love him and all the boys wanna be him, blah blah blah. So I mean like they're they're like the, the prince and the princess. Um yep. but I, I'm just older now, you know, and not that not as invested as I was. So now when I watch it I'm just right. like Give me Karuta. Give me Karuta. I just want to see some sick matches and some some fun characters. Yeah. Well, I, to be fair, I have been fun of, you know, more of these side characters, of the supporting characters of this show more than the, the three main leads. But, uh, but, but that is to say that um, Chihara... Taichi or Arata doesn't have like you know that moment of progression in in the story. I I saw they have you know improved a lot, even like in the past uh the just the past few episodes, like yeah. Arata. Yeah, I mean Taichi's definitely improved if he's in the finals of this tournament. Uh, yeah. And and speaking of progression, like Arata, mm -hmm. thinking to himself at the end of this episode, um, that should be me. Yep. You know, yep. I should be the one playing against Chihaya. Uh when I when I saw that I was like, damn <laughs> How do you really feel? <laughs> Cause he's not the yeah. sort of character who comes out and like expresses even to himself, he's not the sort of person who who thinks that way. Like that's yep. this is mine or that should be mine. Like he was so passive uh in the like the introductory chapter of the series. Yep. When all the characters were younger, you know. Um, so perhaps he's, you know, he's changing a little bit as a, as a result of some, of a setback that he's, that he's encountered, yep. you know, he's, he's like pushing yep. back against that and he wants, he wants some of the spotlight for himself. He wants some glory for himself and he wants, uh, you know, Chihaya for himself. As, as, at the same goes one step back, three step forwards. Three steps forward and one. I th isn't the story one step forward, two steps yep. back? <laughs> well, well, for Arata, it one step back, three step forwards. Oh, so do you think he's gonna win the the tournament, the next one? Uh, I, I, I think he have a good chance to you know like to challenge the, uh, the, the king, the Beijing. Yeah. No, no. Yep. I have I haven't read the manga past that point, so I I I stopped the manga after this tournament, so I I'm allowed to to say my guess. Okay, <laughs> I mean I would, he's he's probably a good guess. Yeah, I don't think Tai Chi is gonna re repeat this amazing performance anytime soon. Yeah, uh, I think I think that hit his streak of 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 winning even even to even if he win this tournaments, will. We'll see it ends soon. Because he's just unlucky, bro. 
He's just no, unlucky, bro. Because I, I see that, you know, like, his his arc like, basically done after this final match. There's no way his arc is done. Uh, we got a lot I, more I mean, like, he, to go. He, 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 hit, he, he hit the uh, the stopping point. That's what I mean. Uh, maybe. Maybe so. But, yeah, but uh, still, still really pretty much enjoy the era from Guru. Yeah, it's the, the best. Show. Yeah. All right. Uh, I I want to see more of Shinobu without. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I mean, we will because the very next tournament is the Queen Qualifier, so she'll probably show up to check out the competition. You know, she'll do one of those scenes where like everyone's watching a match, and she'll like she'll spookily kind of slide into focus in the background. And uh... yay, yay! My favorite <laughs> moments. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, she maybe is, she maybe is the best. Maybe wearing some some weird uh, t-shirts as well. Yeah, with like Daddy Bear on it, or the uh, the snowman, yeah. the snowman mascot that she and Chihaya Fudu both, or that she and Chihaya both love. Yeah, that that's worth go. That just go. Yeah. All right. All should right. we move on to a different series? All right. Um, all right. So final guess for you. Um, who gonna win this tournament? This oh Chihaya. This, yeah, yeah, all right. easily. Yeah, she's gonna make a comeback, and Taiji's gonna be mad. All right, easily. Well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, next week, let's see how your guess uh is right or not. All right. All right. Let's go with the next one then. Um, Mister. Sure. That's actually the very next. Uh, you know, my notes here. That's next. So. Hmm. All right. Good. Perfect. I. All right, I, I I can start that first. This first. Yeah. Um, I think this episode is spent a lot on that on its settings, uh, with with whole bunch of new characters, with them stepping outside of their school as well, and for for me this is like the it's mark the beginning of like the the new arc after like the the whole the whole thing before that that I think was like more of the introduction. And I think that this is episode is good. How about you? Um, I was not really a fan, despite mm-hmm. wanting the series to get away from Cherryton Academy. Uh, I feel like yeah. it kind of missed its window. All right. Like when they, so this is the one where they leave the school, you know, and they're they're out in the city, and there's mm-hmm. uh, not really sure what they're doing there, to be honest, uh, because we don't see them go to the meteorite festival mm-hmm. because they're supposed to help set up or something. That's the reason they go. Yeah, they're supposed to buy some stuff, I think. I was supposed I, to buy some if stuff. If I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we did see them in a shopping mall, I, I think. Uh, yeah. But I didn't get the se- I didn't get a real sense of what they were doing. So right. that yeah. was kind of harmful uh, for me. And and then <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. there's the whole thing with like the, the dark, uh, what's it called? The dark market? What, what was it in your subs? The, the black market. The black market, okay. Uh, for some reason, post-apocalyptic subs who I'm watching, they called it the dark market. I don't know, because they wanted to uh-huh. include dark mark like the rhyme or the Harry Potter, thing or whatever. Yeah, the the dead so they, uh, they we go there and like the focus is so tight on Legosi and the three other his three other schoolmates that mm-hmm. we don't really get a sense of how the dark market operates or like what the atmosphere is. We get some some shots of it that are pretty far removed we also get one as the camera makes its way through it but like i don't know i i just i would have preferred more crowd noise like more interactions between vendors and um the people who are shopping there like to get more of a sense of its seediness and its its uh, illegality you know mm-hmm. and uh, I, f- I felt like that was missing i didn't understand the panda at all uh <laughs> so a lot of this episode was just going over my head right. i think all right. I thought the the uh the decision of making him the panda, is re- it actually a pretty cool idea. Why the is that? C- cool concept, because because panda is more of like pre- uh, predator, but uh the bear because he from he he from you know the bear family, but at the same time he's he's a vegan, he just eat bamboo, so so it, he he kind of like the the good mix between. You know, uh, 
again. Uh, herb, her, herb, 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 oh, well. Herbivore and carnivore? Herbivore and carnivore, yeah. There it is. Right. <laughs> I, I I had to, to use the term now because uh, I I don't think... Uh, yeah, they, they, are, they, are, they are the main team of, of the show. Yeah. Um, all right. So yeah, I hadn't uh, I hadn't thought about that. I guess I mean when I think of pandas, I just think of them munching on, you know, Bamboos? bamboo <laughs> shoots and leaves and stuff. I I don't think of them as being predators exactly. I mean, I, think I guess they are strong enough to they kill are, people, but they're so cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, yeah, he's they're panda bears, I guess. So yeah, sure, he's kind of caught between two worlds but I, I i don't know i just found all his scenes to be very bizarre like he he locks him up and then they they have tea together or, or something and then he yeah. just lets him go like all right all right so no the whole point is that he want to do the uh um the section with him so so just like to to talk he to to uh to talk and get the idea it, it's it's like therapy basically and he locked him up because uh, he saw that uh, legacy was out of control. So uh, he was ripping and, and stuff. So so he, he reckoned that uh, legacy had just, you know, eaten or, uh, you know, like ham on the animals before that. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so I, so, so, so that said, I, I think that, you know, like the conversation was, you know, that, that was grazing up like, Really, really well. Um, he 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 see you know, he he see the point of you know like why Legosi is still hanging, you know have a special interest to uh, to Haru. So I I mean I, he I, he doubts that though he he he, he, he calls him out yeah. he like he says that's just bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I actually think he making a good point. Well, you think so? I mean, that might yeah. explain why Haru is... We don't see much of her, and she's kind of underdeveloped as a character. Is that... Because... She, like, Legosi's interest in her is kind of just a smokescreen. And the series is going to go, like, full... Full darkness. Full carnivore mode. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> and she's just, like, a, right, I... a, a red herring. Or a red hair. Yeah. <laughs> No, eh? she, 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 why is she not red? No, she's, she's, she's cute. She's a red she, hair. <laughs> all right. Um, this is, um, again, based on me who haven't read the manga at all. But I think based on the OOP, that's, I think that's going to be a case where, you know, like the uh, the feeling of legacy had for... Uh, for Haru is more of you know that a predator want to eat his prey. Uh, you don't think that it's eventually going to be like, no, I really, I really do love her. It, this is this is true love. I can I can overcome yeah. my my nature and you know, love love uh, someone who's different from me. So he struggled. On, I I think he will struggle on that, but like at the at the very moment he just lost control of himself. That's what I think. That's that's the story gonna go. Okay. Um, so in the end, then that will also be playing into the carnivores are, are yep. they? Uh, you know, they uh, eat they eat the herbivores, thing, right? right. Jeez. Yeah. I, I just don't feel as though uh, the show has. I don't know. All right. Um, like I I it always comes back to that and that that kind of because I'm not into the show to begin with. Like I would need yeah. it to present something totally new to right. hook me i guess so all right um now get back to the uh, plaque on the net market <laughs> um I, I i actually can see your point but um i think um like you you remember the scene before that where where a sheep i think offer his fingers for for for, for legacy and his friends yeah with, I the, think with that... the price tags on them i thought that was a really interesting uh, yeah. shot you know where he his, I, his fingers are clenched like his fists are clenched and then he slowly extends his fingers and you see the price tags i thought that was neat yeah geez and um i, I think that pretty much set the mood 
up to now that how this uh, pragmatic uh, kind of work. So I think that's the one of the reason why it focus more on that point than you know like trying to establishing the the, the market. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the entire episode was structured around them leaving the campus. So with yeah. with that in mind, I would have preferred for them to make the most of that opportunity. Right. And also the the insane, or not insane, the uh, just the overwhelming focus on legacy. Like, Beastars has a very mm -hmm. creative setting. And to get the most out of that, I would prefer an ensemble. But yeah. it's mostly mm -hmm. just legacy. Yep. You know, it's like 80% him. Yeah. Uh, he's it's always, when people are talking to him, he's always like, kind of blocking out it, their voices a little bit and thinking to himself and actually you know like a hundred percent he not like 80s yeah. oh we, we we saw a bit of haru yeah yeah she thought to herself i could see myself being friends with this guy and yes which i thought was very bizarre like yeah. i thought that not just because i mean maybe i was just thrown by the fact that we were hearing her internal monologue rather than legosi's for i think the first time yep but uh i thought that was a really weird thing to say because she seems to be, I, I don't know. I just don't have a grasp on her character at all. Right. So I can't really comment too much on that. All right. Uh, talking about the ship, though, there, uh, the ship who, who offer his fingers, uh, there is something that, you know, really sh uh, struck me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that sheep don't have fingers. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> all right. So, so maybe they're not sheep. I think he was a goat because he had uh, he had oh, the right. he had horns. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe he's a goat. Goats it's, it's... also do not have fingers. <laughs> but but like he had all his finger intact. No, weren't a couple of them uh, bitten off? Oh really? Oh, yeah, really? pretty right. sure. Jeez, that's nasty. Yeah, and they're actually using yen as the currency in that world. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> Why not come up well, with an animal currency? Well, well, well they, they they speak Japanese to begin with. No, wait, they're not they, using it in. Wait, sorry, go ahead. Uh, they're speaking I, Japanese. I think they, 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 uh, right. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they have like the uh, the, the the yen currency, like in uh in his prime tag. In uh, in in my subs, there was one particular line of dialogue where, oh no no, it was Zuzel. Instead of Google, Zuzel. they called it Zuzel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. And I thought that maybe there was another line that said something about money, and there was like it was like Zoo Bucks or or Zoo Zoolers mm. or something. But I probably imagined that just because of the Zuzel thing. <laughs> Zuzel. Uh, so so my my next theory is that because they use yen as the currency because they speak Japanese for some reason, why they, they why don't they speak English like for example? So this, this is an animals, Japanese anime. This animal might be the descendant of you know the current Japanese. So we have like uh, <laughs> uh, from a new world situation there. <laughs> you can't be serious. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> from the new zoo. <laughs> from the new zoo. Down, 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 down. Right. Uh, okay. Oh, they could be they could be the animals that are outside the holy barrier in uh, Shinsekai Yori. So, you know, like so the like the false sense. Minoshiro and the the balloon dogs and stuff. You know, they could they could be those animals. That that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, we we cracked right. the code. We cracked the anime code. Um, one thing that doesn't uh doesn't really go well with me though is that. Lego C when he came to the city, he he found that you know like only animals living in harmony. He 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 was kind of uh relief by that. Uh, before he before he learned about the black market and stuff, but uh that, make me a question though that, isn't him was born in that city, like he he just came to the uh. Uh, to live in the school for like for just a year, so he he should have no all of that, right? Um, I guess, but I don't think the show really cares that much about what happens outside of Cherryton Academy. Like, yeah. mm. for the show's purposes, they may as well have been babies born and raised at a school. 
um, yeah, I, I think it makes place, more so. sense if they was born and raised in the school. Yeah, but they weren't because because his yeah because his point of view is more like you know that this is a whole new strange world, and I'm glad that you know everyone getting along there. Well, maybe maybe animals actually are like born in the wild, and then they're captured and brought into this society. Hmm. Maybe that's one of the theories. But I don't think. I mean, the only reason I'm even saying that is because you also presented a really bizarre theory. Like I don't. I don't know if there's anything <laughs> to it. I think this is just the show where the animals are the main characters and. Yeah, they you yeah, know some, I'm, some I'm, of them I'm, I'm eat just, the others. I'm, I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, that, I hadn't thought about that. Why would Lego C be like, oh wow, I I sure am glad that in the outside world everyone gets along. Like, mm. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's uh, he. Uh, the only explanation is he was born elsewhere, right? Either you know in the wild or mm. I don't know. Maybe there's just a lot of poverty in the in cities outside of like the city where they went to buy stuff for yeah. the meteorite festival. Um, I don't know. That's, that's the thing though, because we don't know much about their upbringing. Yeah. We really we, don't know much about them at all. We don't know about their family and stuff like any single character. So we don't see any parents. We don't even see the teachers. I, the, I we've actually, seen the Pelican. He's the head of the drama club, right? He's the advisor, I think. He the advisor. He, well, all right. He might be adult. I I I I mean that. I I mean that the only adult, the only real shooting adult that we see so far is the panda, which is the, in this episodes. Huh. I think I'm pretty sure the pelican has been established as an adult character. I'm, pr- I th- right. I'm pretty sure he's the advisor. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's right. that's actually true. I hadn't thought much about that. Um, that this is a school, this is a high school anime, and we're mm. we're just seeing the kids. Yeah. I mean, but that um, also kind of makes sense because everything's locked in Legosi's point of view. Like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. That's but true. I mean, at the same time, that's that's kind of weird. Like, I don't know. That's just the, thinking about it in those terms kind of. Exp- explains the the problems that i have with it i don't i don't feel as though we're getting a very rounded view of the setting despite how creative it is you know with the the menus and the different size doors and the the panda uh psychologists and the Mm -hmm. you know whatever i don't i don't know i just don't feel as though i'm really watching anybody's life on screen yeah it's it it kind of depends because uh sometimes I I feel like I don't I I don't invest that much into the world if they try to explain any every single thing, um, but just like between this show and and let's say like Orange uh our previous show um Hoseki no Kuni. I would say that the the world building the setting in uh, Hoseki no Kuni is more flesh out i i can relate more to them than this one well, this I mean, one i still the setting is I so much simpler a, yeah in right. hoseki no kuni right like, the world well, itself is very limited in terms of its scope mm. b stars is is creating schools and cities for itself yeah yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I i don't know like I don't feel as though there's much of a comparison between the two shows. One yeah. is like an an action an action series, uh, with some really bizarre cream cheese. Yeah, Fight, fighting the cream cheese. Right, nice. and and the other one is like a high school show. You know. Yeah. And that like the char- the characters right. the way they relate to one another just really makes me scratch my head. Like, Legacy and Bill. Uh, yep. on this trip when they're both sitting at the McDonald's knockoff and like eating fries <laughs> and stuff and Legosi thinks to himself didn't we just have a bloody fight recently yep and then that line of thought is not really followed up on like he just keeps sitting there and like stares at a fry with ketchup in his hand there's a shot of him holding a fry with some ketchup on the end after he thinks didn't we just have a bloody fight like wh- how how is Bill even still on the drama club how are people he 
tore a gigantic he like put a gigantic scar on Legosi's yeah. back. I don't well, I don't well, understand. Well, be, yeah, because all of the all of the others think that uh they are stage. They're not a real thing. So Yeah, well, but I can't what about the scars that. on Legosi's back? Yeah, it's it stay there. Nobody cares except Lego C. Lego C doesn't even care. <laughs> that's that's the like that's the thing. I I want if I'm gonna watch a fake story, if I'm gonna watch a fake story that's made up, then I want the characters mm-hmm. in it to be caring about stuff. Like, I don't get how Bill is still around here. I mean, surely Louis knows that it it like all the members of the drama club know that it wasn't staged. Mm-hmm. So him attacking, or for that matter, why is Legosi still in the drama club? He like savagely attacks Bill the Tiger. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't get it. Like, is carnivore behavior just people just kind of look the other way? Well, yeah. Well, despite all the fear of carnivores, like that's well, that's just illogical to me. Yeah, it it, it just more like. The show turned turn out to be a success, so uh, Louis just decided to keep them, and not uh, and not punish them for anything. He I was see. originally planned to punish them. Okay. But yeah. All right. Well. Well, I just want to say that yep. Mario, even at a time like this, your carnivore beak is still so sharp and beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I I take that as a compliment. Uh, compliment. Thank do you, you remember? Do you remember that scene? <laughs> yep, I remember that scene. Dude, the show is just <laughs> reaching so hard for like a for meaning in that scene. Yeah. Your carnivore uh, beak is so sharp and beautiful. Like what? All right. What? Um, <laughs> I I'm not sure what happened with the other two. Uh. I don't know. I I just thought when I when I read that line, I just started laughing. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful line. <laughs> it's it's, it's so dumb. it's a beginning. It's a beginning of a beautiful friendship. I hope so. <laughs> I hope that those two team up and like throw Bill off a cliff and you know <laughs> that way I won't have to be constantly thinking like why why is this guy still around? <laughs> what? All right. Uh, do you want we to get to uh to another show? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, I got more complaints written up here. Right. But no, let's just yeah, let's just move on. <laughs> we can save that for next time. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk at all about the female wolf, but I mean, she'll probably oh, show up yeah. again. She'll probably show up That's again right. soon. I actually forgot about her. Um, I think she would fit for uh, Lego C. Yeah, honestly, I think we should just kill Haru, and she's the main girl now. I actually, maybe in the future, it's it's her gonna gonna kill Haru. Oh when yeah. She she find out that Lego C have a special thing for Haru. Well, just eat her. Yep. And oh, I'd be down. And, and they they will get married, and they will have like beautiful gray wolf, maybe. Anime of the year. Jeez. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the next show with the Hoshi no Shura. All right. All right. Sure. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, practice matches. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, you go. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who am I? <laughs> they, they actually, I, they, <laughs> they actually won that. Won that set. It worked. No, no, they won that game. They didn't win the set. Yeah. All right. They, they, they won the game. It, it worked. I, dude, I thought. I was like, because my my last my last blog post on this show was really negative, so I was like, right. all right, I'm just gonna come into this thing with an open mind. We're just gonna kind of like summarize the episode pretty much in the next post. Take take it easy, uh, yep. and then that shit happened. And I was, dude, what on earth are they thinking in the writers' room for this series? Because this is an original anime; they're not basing yep. it on a manga or anything. What are they thinking? Uh. All right, if I go f- I go by the uh, the tennis rule, that is not allowed. You you're not allowed to scream whenever like the 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 opposite uh be like about to hit the ball. 
Um, what about in soft tennis, Mario? Uh, uh, I don't know. Can't say. No. <laughs> I, I don't think it's allowed in any situation, any sport. Yeah. Well, I when mean, obviously do, not. When, when they play the official match. But well, this in, is not the official baseball, match. In baseball, it might be. Because, like, sometimes outfielders heckle the batter. Hmm. Maybe. You know, have you ever heard people say like, "We want a pitcher, not a belly itcher." We <laughs> right. want a batter, not a broken ladder. All right, did they say? Did they actually say that? What do you mean? Wow. Like, in, no, no. I'm. That, I mean, those are like real uh, chants. I mean, obviously, yeah, people yeah. in the MLB are probably not saying that stuff, but like the adults in the majors, but. Uh, kids mm. like when kids play baseball, they they do that stuff. Those are like right. common chants. Right. Um, mm. All right. And but anyway, like putting aside the 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 legality of it, like it just does <laughs> not feel good to watch. Yeah. It was yeah. ridiculous, and like they win they win the first game, and every, all their teammates are like, "Wow, their strategy is working." And then yeah. when they end up losing the set, they're like, "Oh man, we still have we still have a ways to go." But man, they really showed promise out there. They just need to develop their strategy. That, like that, I was infuriated that, as I was watching that. I was so mad. This is such lazy, actually, lazy writing from all the side characters, just like pumping them up and being like, "Oh man, they almost did it. Man, they they're really gonna get them right. next time." After their ridiculous strategy, I just, you know, like uh, actually they use the same formula. Time three, so like all these side characters have the very same treatment. They won the first game, they lose the remaining, and everyone see the positive in there. <laughs> I could have, I well, could have dealt with that too if the last one wasn't like that. <laughs> I was, well, I'm, I'm mad right now. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, all right, so obviously I didn't match? like I didn't like that very much, you know, like the Shingo and Tsubasa. Yeah. Uh you know, approaching the game that way and the show treating it just as, you know, normal or even like, wow, that's amazing. Uh but the other obviously there was a lot of great animation um mm -hmm. going on. I did, I guess I don't really appreciate that all of the characters are able to set up and like swing swing all the way through on like ninety percent of their shots, um, I would prefer to see a little oh, bit more backhand, yeah. you know, and just a little bit more positioning yep. on the court. Yep. Nevertheless, uh, right. the show looks pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, I, I I do agree with you on that. I think like the show have a pretty good uh, research on you know like even the uh, the technique, the animation, the like all the positioning. I I think they do a pretty good job like. Like even like the the way all of the uh, characters play, are uh, really true. As opposed to one of the other show that we gonna <laughs> we gonna discuss later, <laughs> they feel like ballet. They not tennis. Uh yeah, but I mean ballet ends with the same letter that tennis begins with, you know. So it's just ballet tennis. That's uh. Right. <laughs> That's the animation method that Dezaki was using. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, so, but I mean, yeah, it it does feel like a tennis match is going on. Although all the you know all the characters are able to set up and like swing through properly on right. almost almost every serve and volley. Yeah, yep, yep. yep. Uh, yeah, but I mean, still it still looks pretty good, and. Yep. Um, you know, it it does feel kind of good to watch some of the the less skilled i guess characters mm -hmm. put up mm -hmm. a little bit of a fight against misaki um yep. you know so he, despite it's, the formula i think it's like for the for the first two pairs of kids in particular you know i think it was good to yep watch them get their shot i i agree i i i do feel that it, this is supposed to be you know just a grim not a reminder, just just a step to see that you know they are actually improving, but they still have a lot to work on. Yeah. For e every single characters, I think it's obvious. It is a bit too obvious. But 
yeah yeah at the same time we will actually see like some really uh real uh real strategy i real technique so so i i'm, I'm good with that except for 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 the shouting stuff <laughs> oh my god i'm scared i'm so scared right yeah. now <laughs> don't scream please jeez Man, Super I, Mega I, I, I Cannon I Overdrive. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then we had the last yeah. match. Yep. And the last match. How do you think about the last match? I don't know. I thought it, I thought like, you know how at the end of episode five, the the redheaded guy is like, you know, the, whoever loses is going to get punched. Yep. Um. So I thought like, oh. You know, obviously that's really dumb, and um, but not every character will be like that. Mm. But then every character was like that. <laughs> yeah, like that's true. All of the, uh, all of them were, yeah, that's were true. like really aggressive and kind of snotty. So then I thought, when we get to the last match, um, that guy's personality is going to be, you know, he's going to back off a little bit. Maybe his him saying the whole punching thing was just representative of like the culture at their school or the the mm. attitude. But for him, yep. when he gets into tennis mode, he won't be like that anymore. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> he's he's the like before the match even starts, he's got his elbows up on the net and he's like leaning on it with a smirk on his face. So, uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I agree that the uh, the character writing for 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 these characters are not that good. They they are basically just one and the same. Yeah. Mode. and um, uh, I, I I think that um, our 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 duo will put up a good fight. Uh, that we will see in the next episode. That doubt. Yeah, At this I moment, mean, though, they they are really being underwhelmed by. It. They're being overwhelmed by the other guy. Oh, sorry, overwhelmed. Yeah, they're uh, they're the being like overtaken, you know, like beaten. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I think it's I think it's possible that Maki and Tomo will win. You know, they'll mm. like they'll come back and they'll be the the one bright spot in in this match, and then that will let Misaki know, and like other tennis clubs, it'll let them know that oh, you know, they careful that they have a, they have like a secret weapon, you know, and then yeah. the rest of the series will be dedicated to like powering up all the all the other members of the team and then they'll go to some tournament and you know do the yeah. best and stuff all right so that lead to my on other concern note if this if this gonna be one core i just wonder like how the show gonna end because it, uh, yeah. we are like half point now and it's only just the very beginning stage yeah and like if they're gonna go to some sort of tournament and there's gonna be a lot of tennis focus then then where are we gonna get more of uh, right. of like Maki's dad, where are we gonna get more of Toma's family situation? Right. When are we gonna learn ab about the backstories of a bunch of other players yeah. in the, the tennis group? Yeah. I just, I don't well, know, that's right. Yeah, you remember, I, you remember Battery? Yep, yep, yep. I watched like I think the first two or three episodes. Okay, I watched the whole thing. All right. Um, and good, in the beginning, I think that show, <laughs> not really, because it it got really bad. After a while, um, but in How the be in the be very like yep. that was that was the show that like killed Noi Tamina for me. Wow! Well, uh, all right, go on. Anyway, so in the beginning, in the beginning of that show, it was very like very quiet, very character driven, uh, not as much focus on the sports, and it kind of felt like this show did at the start. Mm -hmm. A little bit, and and then that show went like entirely off the rails and didn't even get to the competition aspect. Um, and I feel like this show might have the opposite problem in that it just goes like full tennis. Yep. Uh, I I I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, okay. did you just say that uh, the whole battery team they didn't even get to the tournament at all? Yeah, from what I remember, they there was there was a. A huge focus on like a bullying um, and like a hazing 
issue going on in the team and I think there was also a production meltdown so they ended up oh. like scrapping plans to actually animate the baseball scenes and oh my god that's the same <laughs> yeah oh, when I when battery first aired I was like oh my god this could be the best baseball anime ever yeah uh, cuz it was just like so focused on the players themselves and that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff that I like to see um mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know why I brought up Battery. This show just kind of, like with the way it started, it kind of reminded me of it. And I mean, at least it'll dodge the specific problems that that show had. But at the same time, I think it has problems of its own. Yeah, I I just hope the pacing they they're gonna put it nicely so that you know we don't feel it rushing or anything. Yeah, I I don't know. I think they like the Maki's dad situation might just get resolved with one more appearance from the guy because after all toma showed up at his house and threw some money at him you know so then he uh. gave his name so then there's going to be like he's going to go to toma's house and uh try to get in there and then the older brother is going to be like no you can't do that and then they're going to fight and uh no no it, it, actually, it actually the mother gonna fight <laughs> oh, yeah. and the, the mother gonna prove to to him that you know see they they they've been getting along all, all, all the time all this time you know, right. Jeez. Hopefully, hopefully that's not gonna be the case. I I would pretty much um uh, prefer that you know uh, that that case gonna be more you know like having a more per permanent effect to Maki. Yeah, I mean. The, I feel like the only thing we can say at this point is just we'll see what happens. But it kind of feels bad to, like, in talking about anime on a week-to-week -week basis, it feels bad to just say, oh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens next week. And then the week yeah. after that, we'll see what happens next week. Like, you, it things are aired episodically. Like, you get a yeah. small chunk of this, this story each week. So you yeah. want, like, and there are specific episode directors brought on for these individual episodes. So you want them each to leave their own impact. Uh, yeah. And to have perhaps their own character that the, they flesh out or their own theme that they work on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I'm just, I just haven't gotten that from this series like too much. Yep. 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 Well, the animation was nice though. So I, I mean, like if you prefer a spot show with, with good animation, I think this show offer that. Yeah, that's true. And some. It's definitely so, true. And if you're looking for like a show, a spot show that have more, you know, than more refreshing characters, I think this show had that as well. It it not really chill, ah! right no, but <laughs> but <laughs> that, that yeah, was I, I, I think like a, compared to like a normal, you know, a, your typical spot show, I think this show still have an edge. Yeah, I I mean I'm not ready to write it off or anything. I still mm -hmm. think it's pretty pretty all right, but we'll yeah. see what happens next week. <laughs> all right, all right. Let let's just switch. Uh, let's just uh, get to another the last show of the seasonal sh stuff. Yeah, Blade of the Confusion. All right. Yeah. So this this week feel more like a transition, I think. Yeah, it's definitely different from anything that's come before. Uh, how do you like it? I don't know, man. Uh, not as much as the last few episodes, for sure. Like, episodes four through six, I think, which are all the ones that we talked about when we came back from our break. I was like, damn, this, uh, this show is really good. Um, you know, each one was focusing on a specific character, so the the scope is smaller and it has time to tell you know a slightly more intimate story in this one we have to like kick things into overdrive with the ito ryu being absorbed by the shogunate and like telling individual stories about taito and shinra from the uh the mugai ryu like I, I don't know as as it cut from from Ito Ryu member to Ito Ryu member like there were some attempts made on their lives and then there was Taito's story with the the prostitute and and Shinra joining up with Manji and try there was it, the show just tried to do a lot um, yeah. and it 
it didn't really communicate its intentions in advance for each of these miniature stories. It just kind of put one on after the other uh, without linking them very effectively, I think. And as as a result, I think uh, that if you're not like closely following it, then you're going to get lost. Yep. Um, to to it effect though, I I feel like there are some moments that the show just nailed it really good, like the the one with Tyro and uh, and the uh, the geisha. Yeah, and that the was my favorite. Uh, prostitute. Uh, yeah. like like. You, I mean, you, maybe you we should call her. Is she a geisha? Scene. Should we use the term geisha? Uh, Geisha is more the high class, and she's not the high class. Okay, but uh, I'm 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 willing to call her Geisha. I mean, I was just thinking that it would be a more polite form of address, but it's true that she's not a Geisha, I guess. Yeah, but whatever. Well, she, the girl. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, it it's true that she she have the feeling for Tyro, and she wanted him to stay, uh, which he also understand that. I I think I think like the hope. Sorry, just just uh, off track a bit. But I think like the whole, the, this show have a thing about like uh, a guy who have a lot sisters. Yeah, uh, Manji didn't he all, wasn't his sister also yep. killed? Yep, yep, yep. Manji and as well. Taito's sister as well. We learned that about him when he first showed up in like episode two or something, right? So that's why that's that's why at first I'm I'm not really sure is it Manji there or like in the past. Or, or or you know it's title but yeah that that the same title so um we we can see like the moment where she uh actually cr- crying so you see you can see the tears falling out falling down to his face right because with how, they're like they're like spooning kind of yeah with with, with her making us see she actually cry I think that this moment like that is is really 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 effective. That's that's like a, the very very good visual storytelling right there. Okay, I uh, I definitely remember that scene. So that's a that's a point in its favor because it at least stuck in my mind. Uh, but mm-hmm. the the thing that was really uh, really left a lasting impact was her death. For yep. me, like the particularly the way in which she is kind of nailed to the floor with the, the knife mm-hmm. or the sword, like through her hands, pinning her to the tatami mat. Yep. And also yep. like her the final shot of her like panning up and over her body. And then you see the glass um, ornament that she was playing with yep. um, during their scenes. You see like half of her face through the the, uh, the colored glass. Right. I remember um, that scene as well. When I when I saw that I was like, "Damn! Like that that is really sad." Uh, that is really sad. And we we hardly knew her at all. You know, we we hardly got enough time with her in order to learn about her. But it's it's still such a tragedy that she dies. So uh, I I mean that like for just like five minutes we know we learned about her. They the show actually does a pretty good job, great job even to, to you know like humanize her to have taken us you know like care about that characters it's just the pacing in general is the pro is the real problems well i don't know if you if you do feel as though you know you got to know her character and you feel you know right. you feel sorry or you feel sad when she dies i i think that that's that's okay all right i i i still feel a bit uh abrupted when when you know when when it, we get to, into the scene that she die, so I, I was like, yeah, she's a, she's supposed to be that kind of characters, but it's still too quickly. Too okay, quick. I I thought it was all right. Uh, um, I mean, particularly the fact that Shinra was the one who killed her at least links Taito's story with Manji's because Shinra then goes and seeks out Manji as an ally against the Ito Ryu. Uh, right. Shinra is the guy who cut off the dog's head. Yep. Uh, at first, I I thought that like Shinra had has some relationship with Menji. Like they they actually look alike. Who? Shinra. Oh, you thought Shinra and Manji had a relationship? Yep. Uh, like brothers. That yep. that that's that my my first impressions. No, I think that's uh, just anime same face. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, other thing, though, uh, can you tell me about the dog? 
where like <laughs> when when did the dog appear that's i Just also i also episode, had right? that uh i also had that note that uh right. i mean the dog appears in the cold open before the op uh, it just shows up next to Rin on the riverbank. And I, yep. I think we hadn't seen it before this episode. We see her feeding it uh, and mm-hmm. petting it at, like, one point in the middle of this episode as well. Yeah, yeah. And then he just That's... cuts off his head. And, <laughs> dude, the scene after he cut off his head was crazy. Like it. <laughs> yeah, well, because... <laughs> that was really that... bad. Yeah, I, I, I was remember that Manchi and the girl was, like, traveling around. To, for revenge, yeah. so they they wouldn't have a dog, and I when I when I saw she with the dog, I was like, oh okay, there's <laughs> a dog from nowhere, but okay. I mean, the dog shows up. It just kind of like wanders up to her when she's sitting by the riverbank at the start at the very start of this episode. Yep, yep, yep. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I remember the scene now. To be honest, uh, most of the cold opens in this show that come on before the op have some sort of link to the very end of right. the episode. So they're like bookended. Uh, um, but this was the worst one. <laughs> yeah, this is. The, the, well, the, the I, scene after he kills the dog's head and like the... Uh... <laughs> no, no. All right. It's, it, you, you laugh just... just <laughs> you laugh like that's what ridiculous. It actually... Um, I, I think the the point here is that uh, our girl actually tastes it and f- also also see that it's, it it tastes very very good. It tastes delicious. Yeah, but the like her reaction to the dog's head getting like seeing the dog's head and realizing what she's eaten, like all the quick cuts and the like the rainbow filter that's put over everything and the like the bizarre drum pattern in the background with Shinra yeah. laughing like a crazy person. As she's yeah. like stumbling forward and like getting ready to throw up or whatever, throw up. like it, it yeah. just the who decided that was a good idea, like to do all that crazy <laughs> effects-driven crap instead of just like staying I... in the moment and like animating her like kind of lo- looking dizzy and then staggering forward a little bit and like heaving. Yep, I, I agree that it 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 feel a bit like sky uh uh. A uh, psychedelic, is that is that the word? I don't even, so I don't it, know it what word like that a, is. A, oh, psychedelic. It, yeah, psychedelic. So I it feel a bit like that, which <laughs> I, I I don't know if it fit <laughs> no. to that moment, <laughs> but it <laughs> it, it stand out nevertheless. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, if uh, if stand out is all we want from anime, then. Uh... We've been evaluating which shows to watch entirely incorrectly. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, this, we that, we shouldn't that laugh, was, though. I, I, I'm laughing. I thought that was bad. All right. I thought that was terrible, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that other people thought it was, like, a really bold choice and it was really beautiful it, or something. It 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 bold, well, right. It's bold, underlined, italicized, and every letter has a different rainbow color. Jeez. Nice. <laughs> uh, but it's okay, because uh, Taito's, um, his friend, you know, the girl, she mm-hmm. died in such a such a terrible way. So that makes up for it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> By the same guy, hey. Oh, yeah. I actually started... I actually started to hate this guy already, so I. I'm pretty sure that's the goal. Episode for him to kill, to be killed. Yeah, I mean, given the the speed with which this show moves, he probably will die in the next episode. Right or not? <laughs> but the thing is, like, Manji was willing to overlook his violence against Rin, uh, at the woodshed. When he like throws Easy. her up against the wall, oh, yeah. and then and then Manji yeah. appears right behind him, and he's like, "Who are you? And who do you work for?" Uh, right, he, right, it's right. not as though they immediately start fighting because he mistreated Rin, which is what would happen in like ninety percent of anime. Yep. And I yep, also yep. don't think that Manji is. I mean, obviously, him, you know, killing the dog and presenting that information to Rin in that way uh, is is pretty cruel. But mm-hmm. Manji is a, a pretty 
cruel dude himself. Like, I don't think he's a big rift is going to develop between himself and Shinra as a result of this. Yeah, um, yeah but 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 there is a rift between uh, Shinra and and Rin. So yeah, but she is like a non-factor. Yeah, you know, like in terms I, of uh, combat ability I, and I, I get what you mean. Every time she tries to I fight, it, know, it's no. just like a misfire, and then Manji comes up and like gets himself sliced into pieces, yep. and then slices another guy into pieces, and then the episode ends. Right. Oh. All right. Uh, I I I just I just found a connection between this show and uh, Kind of Buster, where we have like the the main guy who can die, and who who are immortals. Yeah, there's a lot of immortality um, in anime, I think. Bakano is another one that comes to mind. And, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know, there's probably a bunch of shonen series where, like, characters, some characters right. like, multiple lives or something. Yep. Yeah. Back to Shinra and Manchi, though. So, what, what kind of job does Shinra want assistant from Manchi? They, Shinra is part of the Mugai Ryu, and they want to kill the Ito Ryu for whatever right. reason. We don't know why that is yet. Uh, but right. he just he just wants Manji as an ally, I think. Right. Because it's two I, sword schools. Like, there's mm-hmm. a some kind of grudge between them. I I think in the future though, like in my future, I think I I mean like next episodes, I think Shinra gonna double cross Manji. And and Rin, so that that's why he will be killed by Manji. I see. Uh, maybe. But I mean, I do think he actually wants Manji's help. But maybe, like, I don't know. Maybe the way that Manji goes about things, because they were they were talking specifically about when Kagehisa is going to leave the area. Yep. Uh, Kagehisa being Anotsu, I'm going to start referring to him as Kagehisa because that's how Rin calls him. Mm-hmm. Um. So, like, Kagehisa is going to leave the area pretty soon, and Manji has a plan already, at like wh- where they're going to ambush him or or where they want to catch up with him. Yep. Uh, so if, if mm-hmm. this plan doesn't go the way that Shinra wants it, uh, that could be the thing that kind of drives a wedge between the two of them. If Manji mm-hmm. isn't, like, you know, following his orders exactly, or just isn't, isn't doing things in a way that he thinks is going to be effective. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll probably see that conflict between the two of them pretty soon. Yep. In the next episodes. Yeah, almost certainly. But who knows? Right. We could go back to some sort of character-centric thing, like the uh, the blonde right. woman who killed the guy with poison in this show. Uh, she seems like a pretty interesting character. She drank like a whole bunch of uh, sesame oh, oil yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. beforehand. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, uh, I, she, I would I, I would like to see an episode about her appear in the future. I I would love to see that as well. Yeah. So, actually, if I recall correctly. There hasn't been many um, female characters in this show, but uh, those female characters are quite memorable so far. Yeah, the girl from episode three who was like the right. best, the best swords swordswoman or swordsman yeah. or whatever uh, in the in like like in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. She was pretty interesting. I I have to imagine that she's going to come back. First of all, she's still alive. Most yep. characters just end up dead. Uh, and you know the fact that she's also doubling as a as a geisha and as an assassin. There's going to be more like that doubles the opportunities for her to recur. I think. <laughs> all right, I I I don't get your your reason there, but all right. <laughs> like she she could come back in in there there are more, there's more than one way for her to come back into the story you know it it doesn't just have to be her assassinating yep. somebody it could be another character traveling yep. to her area and like using her services yep. you know yep, yep 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 that makes sense all right i think it's time for for her to move to anti the ace yes let's do it all right how do you how do you oh. feel about oh sorry go ahead what's up yeah 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 how do i feel about what were you gonna say before I said that? The tennis. Oh, oh. I, I just I just said like the ballet tennis. Yeah, I mean it's, 19, it's 1973. Oh, I, I, I'm about to say. Oh yeah, oh, ballet, ballet tennis. All right. It's 1973, yeah. bro. This this show was made 46 years ago. 
All right, because I I just have a very um a a a very feeling that you know this show doesn't do any proper research on the tennis at all. Uh, I mean, this. They, they probably just use the manga as storyboards. Yeah. I that, mean that's that, that's what a lot of anime do, even modern ones. They they yeah. just like, oh, we we got we got the storyboards right here. <laughs> let's let's just draw them and then, uh, you know, create some connecting movement. Let's get some pans, panning shots. Yeah. Let's get a. Let, let's just link right. up all these panels and let's go home and let's all not right, work no, twenty hours a day. The most ridiculous thing about about the tennis here is. is you remember like that there is a girl who who will play in the finals with uh um uh, with our main characters yeah lady orchid all right you... that's her nickname yeah good for you you remember all the names well i don't uh... remember her her actual name i just remember someone from her uh from her school calling her lady orchid i think yep so it's um so he the day before the night before hiromi came to practice uh, at night, he came to uh, to to a, a a a crowd where she went to practice, and she saw her there, yep, practicing and serving, and she's smashing all the balls. <laughs> how how the hell like all the ball would be mashed, smashed? Man. Oh my god, that just blew my mind. I I I played tennis for for ten years. I have I ha- I have never, you know, like break any ball. <laughs> well, I mean, that just goes to show how much better a lady orchid is than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's true. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was really silly. Uh, but it, it was the kind of silliness that just made me laugh. I mean, to be honest, I'm way easier on old anime than I am on new ones. Right. Like, uh, if this were to happen in um, uh, Hoshi Aino Sora, like, some of the yep. characters... Bust, like busting balls into pieces by yep. serving them up against the wall i would be like i'd be like what is this shit <laughs> this is yep. terrible but the thing yep. is like the 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 better that anime has begun to look you know obviously that's objective but like the the sharper it's begun to look and the the more time and attention and detail has been put into anime as it's become mm-hmm. modernized like the closer to reality it feels Mm -hmm. and so as a result if that sort of thing were to happen in a more modern more real sort of anime it would come across really poorly whereas in aim for the ace uh which is 46 years old and looks every it looks every bit as old as it is um it's a little bit different because it really is just kind of a moving manga you know, yeah. like for example, if that sort of thing were to happen in a uh, like a Future Boy Conan style series, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. that dedication to like movement and space being put on screen in a realistic way, I would also think that that was really dumb. Yep. But yep. not yep. not here. Right. Here, it just kind of I... made me laugh. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I see your point. I, I, I don't think that the age, um. It's a factor, but uh, it's also like the the style that this show want to you know, who, uh, want to showcase. I, I I think like that ridiculous thing is along the line with Chocho Beast Adventures, the same kind of ridiculousness. Um, maybe but, like but it's you, work. So but you it's think work. that Aim for the Ace is being campy on purpose? Because JoJo definitely is. Uh. <laughs> Maybe. I, I I hope that they are these are on purpose. Yeah. Not sure though. Um I mean I think parts of it are that there's no possible way that like all the dramatic zooms on characters' faces and like uh, especially the ridiculous dude, do you remember at the start of episode four when um uh Hiromi dropped like Coach Munakata withdraws her from the match because of her leg pain or her knee pain or whatever. And she drops Uh her racket. And like a ridiculous 10 minute long sequence of sound effects happens as her racket is like falling to the ground. And then it's like they were using really bizarre like wood blocks and like washboards, like a whole bunch of weird instruments to make these effects. And it was so over the top. 
Yeah, I just started laughing then too. Like I <laughs> laughed at least once in all these episodes. Right. Um, what was I saying? Why did I bring that up? Oh yeah, like <laughs> that's another example where that the show can't be playing it one hundred percent straight. Right. And right. still incorporating all this this silly stuff. All right. To be fair. Hiromi has improved in these uh, three episodes. For yeah, me. she gets she gets worked to death basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I mean like I enjoy her character more than I I, I did last week, which ah, is I a see. good thing. Uh, so she she actually actually can hit the ball, play some tennis now, and yes, she actually not as whiny as the first three episodes. But you know what else the show did? It also made uh, Otowa the girl who didn't make varsity it made her into right. a huge villain so it's yeah, easier yeah. it's easier to like hiromi because now otowa is just like <laughs> yep. what where's her mustache like she needs a mustache in order to be this level of evil that that's right she she she, she did all the evil deed basically she she, uh, she stole um she stole her racket yep uh, see, um, that that was before that was after the challenge. Oh, that was before the challenge, like on the day of the challenge. Yeah, and, she, and then Madam Butterfly like knows about it. Yep. Oh, in in the in a in an over the top scene as well, where like out of nowhere the uh, her, <laughs> oh my god, her locker yeah. like falls open, <laughs> just four opens with with the the very. The very wrecked in there. Oh my god, that just oh how that's <laughs> <laughs> going to work in real life. I, I wonder. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I mean, obviously the racket was leaning up against the door of the locker yeah. from the inside, and uh, somebody walking by, like the vibrations of their foot traveled th- <laughs> across the floor and up the wall, which the locker is built into, thereby undoing the latch. Um, All right. Why should she lock? <laughs> she did. She did lock it, but just the lock only clicked <laughs> like halfway, and the uh, uh, you know the seismic activity of Matter Butterfly's foot hitting the tile of the school building was uh, sufficient to, combined with the force of the tennis racket against the door, that was uh, sufficient to open it. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's his plan. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> the coach is still annoying as heck. Why? He playing favorite. Oh, I mean that's definitely true, but she's yep. the main character, so he has to do what's written <laughs> in the script. Right, and now she have a love interest as well. She have Todo, who's. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, all right, I don't know why, but I, I just see Toto reminded me of, have, have you seen um, uh, Upon a uh, Purple Hill by uh, Ghibli? I have, yes. I, I don't know why, just uh, that, that Toto character reminded me of, you know, of uh, characters on that period, on, on that very setting. Yeah, it's because um, of his outfit. Like the hat that right. he wears and his uniform, right, right, right. it's kind yeah, of militaristic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what when that, was up on from up on Poppy Hill set? Uh, it's set in the uh, 1960. I I remember it's it, it's set on the year where the uh, Olympic in uh, Japan. Oh, is it? Uh, okay. 1959, is one of these years. Okay. Uh, I was thinking that maybe they would be set around the same time, mm. um, like the story yeah. that Ghibli adapted, assuming it was an adaptation, uh, could have been like created or set in the same time period as Aim for the Ace, and that's yeah. why the, he, you know, he would be wearing a similar a similar outfit. Mm. Um, but honestly, I've seen that in a lot of different anime. Right. Perhaps not a lot, but I can call to mind just a general trend of seeing characters in older in older series or set during older time periods wearing stuff like that and i i don't know yeah why but why that happened in japan like why they wanted to carry uh, over that link yeah. to an era where they like were globally humiliated right but but my point is that i don't see him as the tennis player i just oh. 
so he he lost all all of my you know like cre uh credibility of you know of a tennis player, or or remember the scene where, <laughs> where they play semis, where um he, where he vaults over the wall. He, he yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and and they they make it like super super you know super stylized super dramatic as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know where you got the idea that he's a tennis player. Clearly, he's a gymnast. <laughs> he he's a tennis player, right? He is, but in yeah. that scene, he was more like a gymnast. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, the coaches focus on her and pretty much her alone, and mm. um, Toto is also like very into her apparently. Um, and so and they actually set uh, Ochi o- o- Fujin off of Madame Butterfly off in one of the scenes. He actually what? Oh, um, uh, dude, honestly, I have a different I have a different read on that scene. All right, right, right. Yeah. Like the you're talking about the fact that Otowa called Madame Butterfly to the uh, like the the block or the the street where the two of them were and somehow she made it over there while they were still in the area that didn't make any sense to me like they were walking along the street um mm-hmm. toto and hiromi and then mm-hmm. you know otowa gets on the payphone and she's like madam butterfly get over here quick and <laughs> madam butterfly like teleports to the area <laughs> <laughs> while they're while the other two are still walking along the street i thought that was really weird yeah um, <laughs> but yeah you you think that she was like jealous of See, of the two of them yep i, I was actually thinking that. yeah i actually have a different read uh on that scene because like they they have a practice game hero me and right. madame butterfly and afterwards madame butterfly like um what was that afterwards madame butterfly says she like criticizes herself for taking out her frustration on Hiromi. But yep. I think based on Gunbuster that she's actually in love with the coach. Oh. And she's mad that the coach is playing favorites. Cuz wasn't that how it was oh. in Gunbuster? Like the the really talented blonde girl. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah was that, actually in love with the coach. That makes a lot of sense. That's that's that is right. The the whole Toto thing I think is a misdirect. Like he's Hiromi's yeah. love interest and basically nothing mm-hmm. else. Yep, yep. I can I can totally see that. Huh. So the I think the lesson learned here is you. If if you want a girl to to like you, you have to be like really selfish, really you know, uh, play favorite. Yeah. really ruthless so that the girl will fall in love with you like, right like, you have like... to treat her badly jeez <laughs> uh, all right i mean he's not he's not treating madam butterfly badly at all he's treating hiromi terribly he 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 cheating uh he treating the other girl who um who playing as the villain now very badly as well yeah but nobody cares about her she's evil <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah. You you really don't know. You really don't know why I didn't give you a spot on the the varsity team. You haven't figured it out yet. Go I figure. Still, I still remember that. Uh, oh, one one interesting thing about episode four was that he actually approved the match between Hiromi and Otowa. I thought yep. for sure he was just gonna continue shutting her down and like denying right. all of her requests and. But they actually do play, and Hiromi wins, which I thought was kind of. I was like, eh, do I, do I really believe this? Yeah. Uh, but it was a close match, and I, I did I did like that scene quite a bit because I liked the coloring of it, like it was mm-hmm. taking place at sunset, which is like a transitional time, right. uh, in the day night cycle. So like the sun is kind of setting on Otowa, uh, metaphorically, like her, her. Um, her place on the varsity team is slipping even farther away from her. Um, mm-hmm. And as the scene goes on, like, Hiromi is depicted in full color, but Otowa is depicted in, like, one shade of blue, as though a shadow is being cast on her. Um, mm-hmm. Which really contrasts mm-hmm. against the, like, the yellow background. So it's, it's as though, like, the sun, the sun is continuing and continuing to set, and she's becoming, like, literally darker as the as the scene goes on she goes it goes from everything being in color to 
her being uh just being painted blue like all the cell all her cells are just painted blue yep uh and you know she eventually loses and yep and she 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 doesn't give up she's oh, the no. one that's possible <laughs> yep all right she is the uh she is that um rosa versailles character it was like damn what was her name dude i couldn't Madame. remember last time i told myself i was gonna look it up this time i forgot Madame. it was Madame. it absolutely started with a b so it wasn't madam butterfly but it was like rose Madame. of versailles Bourguet, Bourguet. yes it was it was like B beauregard or Bo Bo. <laughs> damn it all right i'm I looking it up right look now look it up real quick <laughs> Uh, Rose, oh, oh Madame so. Dewberry. Oh, Dewberry. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was there was another character that was kind of similar to her. I don't remember whether she was the first one or the second. So Madame Dewberry is the first one. I think you refer to the second one who's come from who who appear later in the in the story, but become a very friendly with um. Uh, Marie Antoinette later on. Uh, yes, it was uh, Polonia. Is that the one? Right? Polonia. Polonia. Hold on. Polonia is... Uh, she, a singer in the Palace of Versailles, but she does not live there. Marie Antoinette listens to her and quickly makes becomes her friend. She impels Marie Antoinette to bet in clandestine casinos without the permission of King Louis. She manipulates the queen for her own benefit. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's For some one. reason, Polignac. the name Polignac uh, is not ringing as big a bell as Dewberry, but... Yep. Who is the uh, older sister of Rosalie? Who's what? Who is the older sister of Rosalie? Remember Rosalie? Rosalie is the blonde girl, right? Who uh, right. Oscar saves. Yep. She has a... Yeah, she has sister. the older sister, the brown-haired girl who lives in, the, in like, a palace or... Yep. Like, she gets adopted by a... A well-to-do family. I can't remember her name. I already right. clicked off the Wikipedia page. My bad. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Give me two seconds, Rosalie. <sighs> she gets involved in the uh, like the in Bastille right. Day somehow, yeah, doesn't yeah. she? Lady Cha Cha. Yes. No, that's Oscar's nah. last name. Oh, oh, sorry. Oscar Jarje. Alright. Okay, let's let's just go back to <laughs> everyday ice. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. So Hiromi, Oof. you know, she wins the game and she gets to stay on the team and uh. <laughs> <laughs> then Lost I mean, of thought. good good for her. Uh, she actually keep winning now. So see, uh, in in even like in the official match, in uh, yes. the semis, she actually beat another girl. Yeah, she does. Everyone else on the team wins in straight sets, but it takes her yep. uh, all three, three games. Sets. That that's right. First, yeah, all three sets. Uh, yep. Yeah, but she does win. Um, although, like both the Ottawa uh, match and her match in the semifinals, in both of them, it's it's kind of implied, and even. I mean, it's not even implied. It's just stated by, like, the coach and by people who are watching mm -hmm. that her opponents are, like, self-destructing. Yep, yep, yep. They're not, uh, you know, it's not as though Hiromi has suddenly become this godlike tennis player. She's yep. just, uh, you know, getting favorable draws, I guess, and her opponents are underestimating her or getting nervous or whatever. Yep. And, I think that makes sense. Well, yeah, but... It, it it does make sense, but like to go to go back to that idea like multiple times and say, Oh, you don't you don't know what true skill is yet. You know, all of your victories thus far have just been pure chance. Yeah. I don't know, like I'm ready for her to I mean, obviously she's gonna get destroyed. If she yeah. wins against uh Lady Orchid in the in the finals, then I'm gonna be like, This is some this is some BS uh, but I mean, the the girl is literally busting tennis balls into pieces. 
How can she possibly <laughs> beat that? Her serve is probably stronger than the coach's. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, I'll let all the ball I already did a first day before. Who knows? Oh, yeah, um, maybe. Like deflate gate in the NFL. Like the Patriots were accused of using deflated balls. Maybe she uses uh, tennis balls that are already broken. Yep. yep. To, just, just to scare uh, our character off. Right. She knew that she was coming. She knew yep. that she was yep. going to come by to practice. Hmm. This is this is why she's like the best player on uh, Kaga and Kaga High, the other school. Yeah, it's because she has all these like next level strategies. She's on the yep. same level as the two guys from uh, Hoshi no Sora who just scream at their opponents. All oh, right, she's maybe on, she will do that all, uh, in the final match. Yeah, they're all on another. I mean, tennis players actually do that. <laughs> not not the screaming, but like yeah. when when they hit a ball, they go. Hot. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you know you know like uh there is the uh, the report saying that Shapo Shapova voice when she's screaming on the tennis court is the same in in terms of loudness it's the same as uh the the truck going I think as a truck. Yep. Uh, oh my god. Well. She's a she's a powerful girl. She is. Gotta appreciate strong women. <laughs> With strong voices. <laughs> as strong as trucks. <laughs> oh my god, that that's so annoying. <laughs> I but um yeah, but now I just realize um you know when when when, when I see when I see like on the uh, ridiculous over the top of Envy the Ice and I compare that to, you know, the show Chucho Biz Adventures, I've actually feel like i want to watch the show more i i'm, I'm now i'm i'm truly like intriguing intriguing in uh, to watching these shows just to see like just to get all these over the top moments jojo's bizarre tennis adventure jeez yeah that's right uh yeah i mean sure whatever <laughs> whatever whatever helps you know <laughs> Uh, I mean, I do think there's some level of camp to what's going on, uh, some yeah. level of like purposeful over dramatization. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I mean, but not entirely. Obviously, it's also a product of its time, and there's just some some cheesy stuff in here as well. Right, that's true. Oh. I thought you were. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, I just I, I just thought of another like ridiculous part of Amber Days. You know you know the part where, you know, the coach he he, he did surf and making Hiromi to a uh, return. So the the last time uh, I, I, I I mentioned about how the people just go just go straight, just just you know like hit uh Hiromi yeah. in in her bodies. Oh I think mm. I know what you're gonna say. No, 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 no. So this time though, like after they they practice, the um he he me just go for for eating and she left actually left like all the ball there. So, like she didn't even care to pick up. Like who who gonna do that? <laughs> who who gonna pick <laughs> up the ball? How do you know afterwards? she didn't pick him up? Did it did it they, they, actually, they actually show her walking off the court while all the balls were still there? That that's right. That's right. Oh, they okay. actually a single shot of that. Because yeah, that that's that the that the shop where she said like she gonna have a ten uh, ramen hamburgers. Right, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus uh, I mean, there's that. There's also the fact that after she won in the semifinals, she did not shake her opponent's hand. Oh. In fact, there was no like when the camera pulled back and showed the entire court, her opponent was not even there. <laughs> so like I, I don't know. I I just Where feel as. I just feel. I just feel. I mean, obviously, she was ashamed of losing to someone who was like that new and inexperienced. Um, I just feel as though whenever the show would would have to depict any sort of like complex um, motion that, or I don't yeah. know, any any sort of scene where you have to like show her like approaching the net, for example, and her opponent also approaching the net for them to for them to shake hands. Yep. You just kind of cut that out. You know, because it's shortcut. Oh, the shortcut. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's lots of shortcuts being taken. I mean, you can watching this show, you can kind of tell why 
the anime industry is like is thought of as being so slapdash you know like every single project everyone's just like working like crazy just to get a finished product out there yep uh that that practice was probably dating this far like 46 years old it's probably it was probably going on back then too judging from the series it's only when yep. you watch something like uh heidi that you don't get that that impression yeah or i yep. didn't anyway i mean but i just think takahata and miyazaki are like god level geniuses um and Dezaki obviously has a very different mindset he's he's just trying to create like individual shots that are very dramatic and like he wants to link them together as best he can right uh and i mean that that mindset i think carried over into a even like anime that are made today i think you know there's there's a lot of emphasis and time uh put on and put into like still shots where a character's like elaborate design can be like really brought out mm -hmm. but when it's time for that character to like for example walk from point a to point b like from one building to another nope can't do it that's way too hard how do i animate a character walking <laughs> I mean that's typical of like a lot a lot of anime. Uh, yeah. So I mean that was probably happening even even, you know, almost fifty years ago. Right. Well, well, well. All right. So that. Do uh, you have any other notes on this show? I got a full. We wrap up. I got a full page here, but I think I I think we got the most important stuff. <laughs> Hiromi is better at tennis now, and, you know, they're going to fight against Kaga in the finals, and she's going to try not to get tennis balls busted on her on her stomach. Yep. Into a million uh, pieces. Poor girl. <laughs> poor tennis balls. Yeah, 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 that's true. They, they, they are all the victims of power. Lady Orchid's movement. violence. That's right. Yep. <laughs> All right. So that uh, yep. So that's might the end of our week. I actually it's this season had had come to like halfway point already. Yeah, the state of the season post is up. I haven't yep. looked at it yet. Yep. I'm afraid to look at it because I'm afraid the formatting might not match the one that I did last time. Because I am obsessed with that sort of thing, but. I'm sure it's fine. All right, it it looked pretty good. It it looked fine. Okay, good. Yep. All right, so we're gonna see you next week with some more news on, um, on the anime of the seasons and three more episodes of M for the Eyes. Now I'm genuinely want to watch M for the Eyes. I mean, we it's twenty six episodes, right? We've already seen six of them. Yep. It's yeah. only gonna take like you know I will probably do four episodes for a couple a couple weeks and it'll only be like six more episodes. So by the end of this season, by the end of twenty twenty nineteen, we'll be done. Yep, pretty sure. All right. All right. Looking forward to that. Hang in there. All right. See you guys next next week. Take care.